Welcome to another Patho video. This video begins a two-part video series entitled The Complement System. Today let's talk about what the complement system is and how it helps fight infections in the body. The complement proteins are an important part of the body's innate immune response. This system of proteins is so named because it helps or complements the body's immune system in fighting infections. The complement system consists of more than 30 proteins produced by the liver and are then released into the blood and circulate in an inactive state. The different complement proteins are designated by an uppercase C followed by a number. To become activated, they are split into fragments that are named using the lowercase letters A and B. For instance, when C5 is activated, it splits into C5A and C5B. The complement system is activated by way of a cascade, where one activated complement protein triggers the activation of another, and then another. With each successive reaction, more complement is formed and the signal is amplified. Activated complement assists to destroy microbes in three main ways. First, inflammation. Second, enhanced phagocytosis, also known as opsonization. And third, by causing bacterial lysis or cytolysis. Let's talk about the specifics of how the complement system aids the body in fighting infections. This process starts with the activation of C3. When C3 is activated, it splits into C3A and C3B. C3B acts as an opsonin. This means it makes it easier for phagocytic cells to recognize bacteria or foreign material. You may compare the process of opsonization to putting jam or honey on toast. Would you have a greater desire to eat the toast if it was coated with one of these tasty condiments? In the same way, macrophages and neutrophils will eat up a lot of bacteria when the bacteria are coated with the activated complement C3B. C3A acts as an anaphylatoxin. This means that it causes mast cells to release histamine. Hopefully you remember the important actions of histamine on the vasculature that enhance inflammation. Number one, histamine causes vasodilation. This brings more blood and more immune cells into the area. It also causes, secondly, endothelial retraction to allow the immune cells to leave the blood and enter the affected tissues. In addition to acting as an opsonin, C3B will also activate the next complement protein in the cascade, which is C5. C5 gets split into its activated forms, which are C5A and C5B. C5A is an anaphylatoxin just like C3A is. There are receptors for C3A and C5A on mast cells and basophils, and when these activated fragments bind to these receptors, it triggers the release of histamine. In addition, C5A is also a powerful chemotactic factor. For phagocytes, meaning it attracts phagocytes to the area where they are needed for cleaning up debris from tissue damage or for eating up bacteria. C5B starts the activation of several complement proteins involved in bacterial cell lysis. Complement protein C5B, C6, C7, and C8 bind together sequentially and insert themselves into the bacteria's plasma membrane to form a receptor. This is a receptor for C9. Many more C9 then bind to the receptor to form a channel that allows extracellular fluid 
to enter the bacteria and cause it to lyse. The complement protein C5B through C9 collectively form what's called the membrane attack complex, or MAC. Here now is an animated summary of the actions of the complement system. Pause the video now for review. This concludes part one of the complement system. Please join us now for part two as we describe the three ways the complement system initially becomes activated. Thanks for watching.